Good morning, everybody. I'm with you live from Holy Trinity Rectory for this service of morning prayer. As today, the Church remembers the life of Pandita Mary Rambai, translator of the Scriptures. Mary Rambai was born in 1858, the daughter of a Sanskrit scholar who believed in educating women. Converting to Christianity, she nevertheless remained loyal to many aspects of her Hindu background, pioneering an Indian vision of the faith. She became well known as a lecturer on social questions, becoming the first woman to be awarded the title Pandita. She spent many years working for the education of women and orphans, founding schools and homes. Personally, she lived in great simplicity and was a prominent opponent of the caste system and child marriage. She died on this day in 1922. As we prepare to begin our celebration, let's spend a moment in silence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning, Psalm 100, and 36. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who laid out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his mercy endures forever the sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures for ever, the moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures for ever, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, for his mercy endures for ever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures for ever, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, for his mercy endures for ever. Who divided the Red Sea in two, 
for his mercy endures for ever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures for ever. But Pharaoh and his host he overthrew in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures for ever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures for ever. Who smote great kings, for his mercy endures for ever. And slew mighty kings, for his mercy endures for ever. Sion king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures for ever. And Og the king of Bashan, for his mercy endures for ever. And gave away their land for a heritage, for his mercy endures for ever. A heritage for Israel his servant, for his mercy endures for ever. Who remembered us when we were in trouble, for his mercy endures for ever. And delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures for ever. Who gives food to all creatures, for his mercy endures for ever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father, but his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was on him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty saviour for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. 
This is the word of the Lord. A reflection on the reading by Rosalind Brown. The child grew and became strong in spirit. Events at John's circumcision provoked fear among the neighbours and the news spread like wildfire, leading people to ask what it all meant. Names were significant and John meant God has been gracious. Zechariah, able to speak again and bursting into praise, was sure that in God's grace his son would be the prophet, going before the Lord to prepare his way. What a weight of expectation on this baby's shoulders, not just from his parents, but from the whole community, and indeed from God. There's a fine line between hopes that hold out opportunities, supported by encouragement and freedom to develop our God-given individuality, and fixed expectations that a child is forced to fulfil. Zechariah and Elizabeth had to raise John to love God and be himself so that he could become what he was called to be under God. But they were already elderly and died without seeing everything unfold. John was in the wilderness until he appeared publicly and scholars think he may have been raised in an orphanage in the desert run by the Essenes for the children of priests. That harsh wilderness environment formed John, but his parents laid the foundations for him to grow and become strong in spirit, enabling him to face the challenging future. Vocation is always dynamic, embracing our whole life, and is an adventure with God into unknown territory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. My dear friends, let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. As we reflect this morning on the story of John the Baptist, that harsh wilderness environment in which he was formed, the unknown territory into which God took him. So we pray that we might be strengthened by our present circumstances and by the power of the Spirit find a fresh resilience to move us and shape us today, to find afresh our vocation to love and serve God and one another. As we pray for the life of our parish, on this last day of the month, we pray for those who live in or walk through or normally do business in Walton Street and West Eaton Place. We pray for people who are especially vulnerable in those streets. and for businesses that perhaps fear they may never open again. As we give thanks for the life of our church and community, we continue to pray for the creche for key worker children and those at risk run at our primary school. Remembering particularly our head teacher, Avis Hawkins. And we pray for the parents of those children as today they set about their vital tasks in combating coronavirus. Each year, at the end of September, our Arts and Crafts Festival celebrates the Arts and Crafts movement, which formed and gave rise to our church building. Today, the Arts and Crafts Festival Committee will meet online to think ahead to September and amidst all these uncertainties to wonder what we might do this year. The world will be saved by beauty and we pray for the committee as it makes plans and preparations looking forward with hope to the day that the Cathedral of the Arts and Crafts, Holy Trinity Sloan Square, might be open again. In our prayers for the Church throughout the world, we pray today for the Diocese of 
Mwakwa in Tanzania. The Bishop Jacob Chimilegia for the Diocese of Yambio in the Sudan. For Bishop Samuel Penny. For the Diocese of Yangon in Myanmar. For Archbishop Stephen Than Mient U. And in this Diocese of London, we pray for the parish of Christchurch Spitalfields and its rector, the Reverend Andy Ryder, and his assistant priest, the Reverend Darren Wolfe. We pray for Christchurch, Church of England Primary School, and also for the St Bennet's Chaplaincy at Queen Mary University, London, for Ella Sharples, the chaplain. We pray for all the clergy and people in these places, especially for those where health systems may not be as strong as they need to be in these present times. Belonging to the body of Christ, to the communion of saints, may we deepen our fellowship in this moment of crisis and be ready to reach out and support others. We pray for those we know to be sick or sad in body, mind or spirit, especially remembering Ray Anderson, whose mother has just died. Also for Alison Delane, praying for a full recovery for her. In the silence, dear brothers and sisters, name before God those close to your hearts in need of God's grace at this moment. And as we pray for those who have died, Remembering so many people who have died in care homes in this country in recent weeks. So we also remember Anne Anderson, Jordan Phillips, and Jean Cunliffe Owen, whose anniversary of death falls this week. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. As we pray for our own nation's fight against the virus, so today we pray especially for all those leading the testing of the population, for those responsible for taking the tests and for those processing the tests and for our government as it leads us forward. And on this day that the Church remembers 
Pandita Mary Ramabai. So we give thanks for her life, for all who, like her, translates even today the scriptures into new languages, making the Bible accessible to people all over the world. And as we recall her Hindu background, so we give thanks for our partnership with other faith communities in our borough, our Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, especially for the Hindu community. And we give thanks for strong women like Mary. who lead us in education, the care of orphans, and in the life of nations. God our Father, who gave wisdom and insight to your servant, Pandita Mary Rambai, to fathom the depths of your love and to understand your design for the world you have made. Grant us the help of your Holy Spirit, that we also may come to a full knowledge of your purposes, revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our wisdom and our life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, it's been a joy for me to be with you live today again from Holy Trinity Rectory for this service of morning prayer. And uh, I'll be here again tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock as we celebrate a great feast of the church, the feast of Philip and St. James, the Apostles. Join me then. Have a wonderful day. Take good care.